is Ogre Barbarian here, also known as Brett. With me today, as always, we have... Hey, this is Daniel, also known as DPO4027 on Reddit. And unfortunately, Doombox is unable to join us today, but we are the Oddsmen. Yeah, he's at a concert. So. Yeah, he had to go to Warp Tour. Uh, kind of jealous. I wish I could be out and about these days, but it's too hot in my country and I can't... I basically can't be outside anymore. So I, I don't want to hear it. It's been like 110 in California all week. Sure. I mean, I, it's probably around the same, I'd imagine, here. We, we The only difference is we're on an island, so it's super humid. But I mean, I guess if you're near the coast, the, it's probably as just as humid, too. So Thankfully, I am not. Ah, uh, okay. So you get to be... Uh, I think I think where you're at, you're, you're uh, near the mountains, right? Right in between it all, actually. We're like literally dead center of California. Wait, you're in a valley? Yep. Are, Oh, that's probably worse because all hot air gets trapped there. Yeah, it gets it gets blazing hot. Oh, uh, okay. Well, so yeah. I wasn't exaggerating when I said 110. That's actually like it was that like two days ago. I feel you. I feel you. Yeah, but to give you an idea of the conditions I'm currently in, I had to close all the windows and doors in the room that I'm in, which is kind of small because the neighbor kids were playing with bugs and they make a lot of noise. So yeah, I'm I'm dying in here. <laughs> Uh, you have created a sauna. Yeah, and I have no air conditioning in this room either. And my computer's on, and it's really hot. <laughs> you have created a sauna. Oh, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> bef- before we get started, uh, just to remind you guys who are listening to this podcast, before the next podcast, hopefully we'll be giving away another Odds Men monthly giveaway for at least a $10 gift card at the end of this month as well, uh, during our live show. Currently, we're just under the $30 goal so if we achieve the $30 goal, we'll be giving away a $10 gift card. Since we don't have anything under the $30 goal, I thought about it and I thought, well, I can't, because of the way iTunes cards work, we can't give away less than $10 at a time. So what we'll do is we'll split it into $5 and $5 and bank it for the next time around. So let's say if we don't achieve the $30 this month in August, we'll put it We'll put $5 aside and add it to the giveaway for September. So meaning if by the time we get to September and it's still the under $30, we'll be giving away $10 at the end of that month regardless. If we achieve the $30 goal, we'll, we'll make it a $15 giveaway for September instead. So hopefully that'll sit well with you guys. <laughs> I, guess, I, think that's, I, think that's, good. I think that's a fair trade. So, okay, let's get down to business. We'll start things off with uh, the first segment. Here comes a new challenger. Here comes a new challenger! All right, so first thing we're going to talk about is our new challenger. The event actually started today for Atrocitus, the Red Lantern. Everybody is super excited for him. I know I am. I've been digging through his kit, trying to figure out synergies for the guy. He looks like he has insane synergies with just about everybody on the roster. So there's going to be a lot of lot of playtesting room and uh, you know team building space for him, I think. So there's definitely a lot of uh, good things going to be happening, hopefully. It really comes down to, because of the changes with Wonder Girls to the meta, is will he find a place in the meta or will he end up kind of being a little bit lower and not quite as popular as she is? Yeah. I mean, when I was looking over at his kit, there's a lot of like just interesting things about him. I mean, obviously the rage mechanic is gonna the enrage mechanic is is gonna be the crux of his kit, but a lot of things that uh, people have been picking up on is the fact that he's basically got multiple, uh, multiple, multiple call assists in his kit, which is scary. <laughs> so, I mean, do you want to elaborate on that? Well, it's not even just call assists. It's very interesting with a couple of them. But anyway, his secondary ability... Well, okay. So his first ability, his basic attack, is going to attack and he's going to gain a couple of strength ups. And the legendary for it is to get 25% extra damage per enraged ally. So that's pretty good overall. Mm -hmm. Uh, You're probably going to end up deciding that this ability is uh, probably best saved towards the end of your picks for legendary order. Uh, I'm still working on legendary order. I haven't quite figured it all out, but I'll give you my thoughts on it as we go. The second move is going to be a single target, going to debuff him a bunch with uh, hit chance down and crit chance downs. And then he has a 25% chance to call an assist from every enraged teammate. And then the legendary upgrade gives an additional 65% chance, bringing it up to 90% chance 
to call an assist from every enraged teammate. I'm going to correct you there in just one second. You said hit chance down, but actually the notes as I'm reading, it says four crit chance down and four int chance down. Intelligence down. So Oh, my bad. Right. My bad. <laughs> Which is an interesting thing. I because, thought it was... Yeah, I thought that what you said would make a lot more sense to me. But actually what I'm seeing, especially from the videos of people who are playing with him already, it actually is int down. And I'm wondering why... Because there's no int base, there's no special damage, there's no heals in his kit. Uh, what is that supposed to work That's... with? So I really wondered why that was there. What do you think? Interesting. Yeah. Now that I'm thinking about it, I haven't really put any thought into it, but now that I'm thinking about it, it does allow him to reduce defenses of intelligence-based characters. We also have had a high number of special damage characters recently, mm -hmm. so it could be more of a check balance. I guess so. Yeah. And the, the other thing is that he works well with uh, some some of the other special damage characters that have powerful basics like Etrigan, uh, Jessica Cruz, and stuff like that. So Starfire. Yeah, right. So putting it down on them makes their power... They, uh, sorry, putting it down on the enemy team puts uh, makes your other characters stronger. So... Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what that actually does now that I'm yeah. now that we're thinking about it. Yeah, I just uh, thought it was a bit weird. Hmm. Like, why is that in his kit? So, but it is a little bit out of place. It does feel a little bit out of place, but we'll have to see how it plays. All right, let's move on to so, the next move. Uh, anyway, third ability, and sorry guys, I don't remember the names on any of these. I just barely remember what they do. So, um, third ability is a bunch of damage to everybody, uh, and then all enraged or the upgrade for it is all enraged teammates attack randomly. So that's really cool, I think. And this one is not an assist. Yeah. So this is. It doesn't a, say assist anyway. This is a sort of. Um, it's also sort of a buff because it gives. It gives enrage. It has a chance to give enrage to uh to each teammate and two strength ups. So. Right, right, right. Up to seventy five percent chance to enrage them. So. And I believe the testing has indicated that it's a two turn enrage. Yeah. And the yeah. and I think someone posted that on a video too, and and there was like screenshots of that. So there was they were saying that that's really crazy, but uh, yeah. the way that well, I mean, when you think about it, when you think about it, when it couples with his leadership ability, you want to have the enrage for two turns so that he still has the chance to call all those assists oh, yeah. with his oh, secondary yeah, move. Oh yeah, definitely. So anyway, this is his big move. It's his AOE it calls everybody to attack randomly. I'm still interested to see if those are treated as assists or if those are actually just out of turn attacks. Also, the other thing I want so, to know is that does it do do the random attacks here still apply with the rules of um, taunters, for example? All random attacks have to hit a taunter, for example. I would assume they would follow that rule. Mm -hmm. I'm more interested in will they allow will they be allowed to proc passives? Right. The because only, it's not an assist technically. Right. The only reason why I figured that uh, it might not follow the taunt, uh, hit a taunter rule is because the wording is redundant. So I thought it was explicitly redundant. So meaning in Rage, we already know that enraged characters attack with their basic attacks randomly, right? The fact that they explicitly said random enemies. So then maybe it could sort of break that rule for this attack. Well, I don't think it would break that rule, but I mean, I guess we'll see. Yeah, because I, so. I just thought I just thought like, what's the point of making the the wording so redundant unless it actually means yeah. that they're they're going to do that? So that's the only thing I, I that yeah 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 uh, uh, that's fair. Yeah. I guess we'll find out here in the next few hours. Yeah. That's the one downside of recording on the uh, day of the release <laughs> of the event. Right, <laughs> we haven't actually had a chance to play with him yet. I really want to play the event. So. <laughs> <laughs> I know we got to hurry up. Yeah. Uh, anyway, fourth move is passive. Yeah. Uh, gives all of his allies a 30% chance to uh, revive with 40% health and enrage, which is obnoxious in and of itself because it means we have a secondary effect similar to White Lantern Sinestro. So all of his team has a chance to revive. You thought revivers were annoying before? Now they all have a chance to, mm -hmm. even if it is a little bit lower. So I know, DP, you said you had encountered that yep. with a Wonder Girl. Yeah. You thought was dead, and then she popped back up. I was like, whoop, I'm back. <laughs> like, nope. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. It'll be interesting to see how people react to this one. Obviously, with uh, all the heal immunity around, it shouldn't be a problem to deal with. But it is going to be interesting to see what kind of teams you can create out of this for defensive logs are going to get interesting. Oh, yeah, definitely. So, if, yeah, if you're not prepared for it, like, you could imagine um, a character like a team with him 
uh, White Lantern, Sinestro, and Swamp Thing, that could be super annoying to deal with. So, Toss in a little Grundy action. There you go, right? So yeah. nobody dying ever. <laughs> <laughs> so, We're team never die. Yeah, there you go. So his last, uh, anyway, his, his last passive. Yeah, his, it's actually not a passive. It's his leadership. Oh, his leadership. Yeah, okay. But, yeah, it is a leadership. I just want to point that out. It is a leadership. It is not a passive. If it was a passive, it would be absolutely bonkers. Yep. But the leadership at max is plus 50% speed and plus 50% damage to enraged allies. So this is interesting. Uh, I did some math on this. There is one character who will still be slower. This is at assuming full gear 11 for everybody. One character who will be slower than Atrocitus' base speed with that boost, and it's Grundy. So Grundy <laughs> will still be enraged by the time Atrocitus takes his first turn. If you want to call that assist, Grundy is also the character that gains 215% bonus damage while enraged on his basic attack. Seems so he'll have 265% <laughs> damage, 265% damage while enraged with Atrocitus on there. Which so you're it? doing like 300, 365% damage to your opponent's face with that assist. I think that's going to be absolutely hilarious. So what you're saying is Grundy's going to be eating raids. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Alrighty. Grundy mad. Grundy hungry. Alrighty. So uh, but the legend legendary upgrade for this, uh -huh. uh, for the sorry for the first pass, the legendary upgrade is to allow Atrocitus to also have the same amount of chance to revive with forty percent health and twenty percent shield. So it is equivalent of sixty percent. Uh, and then the leadership legendary upgrade is to enrage all allies, give them, I think, two strength ups and 15% shield. Yeah, this is savage. This is a crazy upgrade. <laughs> so, yeah, and it's obviously it's the one that a lot of people were wondering about. So a lot of people took it yeah. in the early testing. Uh, it's not necessarily the one I would recommend first. It really depends on how you want to build them, how you want to play them. Yeah. Do, uh, we, do we know if this at the start of battle effect in rage is also two turns or is this one turn? No, this one's a one turn. Boo. Because <laughs> that would be awesome if by the time you get around to Atrocitus' turn that everyone's. Oh, and it rage. does not enrage Atrocitus himself. Oh, well, that makes. Yeah, because all other. All allies, right? So it doesn't count himself. Right. It, o it only enrages actually, your three. Actually, it says teammates. And now that I think about it, because okay. in, in WB's uh, wording, they use the word allies and teammates a lot. So allies would actually just mean... Right. And sometimes it's yeah. a little confusing, but this one, it was actually used correctly. So Yeah. Okie doke. All right. I mean, do you have a legendary right. order for him just to, for, you know, on paper? Just off the top of my head, what I was thinking was non-leader, three, two, four, one, five. And then if you potentially want him as a leader, go five, three, two, four, one. Okay. And there's also argument for three, two, five. You know, there's there's an argument all over the place, depending on how you want to build him, how you want to play him specifically. His build order is gonna vary. All of his upgrades are good. Yeah. Not gonna lie. I was gonna say that like he he's definitely a level five yeah. or sorry, legendary five candidate. Definitely for people who are who Yeah, I, I very much am thinking so. Okie doke. All right. So, yeah, Atrocitus looks fun. So, uh, look forward to that in the, the next couple of hours uh, while we play through his event. Oh, and his gear set. He is a physical support. Mm -hmm. Samuel is World's Grace Tech, Batman, or Hippolyta. Okay. So, okay. actually, that's... Same quite, as Casey, actually, too. That's quite important to, to, to know because it's good, it's good to know that he's not a striker class because he won't be doing crazy amounts of damage, but... Well, he'll be time. doing decent damage, I think, and he's also going to be a little bit squishy. Yeah, but he, if he crits too, he'll be doing a ton of damage, right? Yeah, if he crit, he's going to have a high crit modifier yeah. without a high crit rate. So, for those of you who are who are thinking of playing him uh, um, on a, some some it's like other certain types of teams, putting him on a de dead shot hired gun or Steppenwolf team might be something you want to consider because he's going to be doing like a lot more damage that way. So there you go. Yeah, absolutely. Okie doke. Um, do you want to get on to Nip Tuck then? You got a little more work done, huh? Yeah, just a little bit. Just a tweaking, tweaking. Maintenance, maintenance. All right, so Nip Tuck, we're going to go ahead and focus on Jon Stewart first. Mm -hmm. uh, not a whole lot of his kit changed, but the things that did change were, I think, pretty important and impactful. The major change is that his leadership is now a passive. 
Mm -hmm. Same as what happened to Supergirl. However, they also changed it from what it was to a new way. So now, instead of counting everybody's health, it just checks Jon Stewart's health. If he is at below, at or below 50% health, the entire team gets strength up and at Legendary gets a crit up. So it's very powerful. Yep. So, yep. And it checks during their turn whether he's at 50%. Oh, okay, cool. This is the way I was reading it. I haven't really played with it a whole lot, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, but uh, that's what I was reading it as. So it should be interesting. He's, he definitely seems a lot more powerful yeah. if you if you come into uh, come up against him in the campaign because uh, doing the uh, PVE missions this week, I just noticed that he just seems a lot more troublesome than he was before. But a lot of his kit seems to be the same though, like in terms of his death immunity, like his basic attack, his yeah. AOE, and his uh, shield mm -hmm. are basically the same. Mm -hmm. The shield did gain a chance to grant death immunity to whoever you target with it, so that's mm -hmm. kind of cool. Mm -hmm. But I think the others are almost identical to what they were before. Right. So in terms of... And then his, uh, his other passive, I forget how much that... I don't think that one changed a whole lot either. He, he used to have a leadership. It just now became a second passive. So... Right. And it seems like it's a really powerful one at that. Definitely. And I think it makes a lot more sense, especially because people want to try other lanterns as leaders now. So you could have him on the team and still be doing a lot of good work and n not having him have to be in the leadership position. Well, I think it opens up a nice precedent now that we have two yeah. characters who have, who had leaderships that were kind of cool, but they weren't really powerful leaderships. Right. And it sets a precedent now that characters that have these kind of leadership abilities are just not quite cool enough. Yep. Yeah versus the actual leadership abilities that people yeah. are using, maybe a lot of them are going to start getting these passive treatments. Yeah. I could definitely see characters like Cyborg and maybe Zatanna too doing the same thing. Yeah, exactly. Like those two characters are definitely on the, the list. I was also thinking Joker Damage Goods might be one that would yeah. be... There's a handful of other ones. But I mean, it's definitely something to look forward to as we move forward with the game because... I think it's a step in the direction that, you know, not everybody has to be a leader. Right. But I, I also think that the other the other part of it is that the dev team, as they're planning new characters, not just the reworks, is that they want to release maybe at least one or two characters each month that has a leadership so that if you have a lot of characters with really juicy leaderships, they're going to be fighting over for certain spots in a team composition. So they don't want to make it so that you have to really have to decide so you can play with everybody and get as much uh, as much benefit as you can out of your team comp. So I think that's probably... Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Tinfoil hat real quick. Yep. We had one character last month who had a leadership. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Uh, so we had Supergirl rework. We had Dr. Poison rework. Yep. Wonder we had... Who Wonder were the two new characters? Wonder, Wonder Girl and... Giganta. None of them had leadership. Giganta. None of them had leaderships. There you go. Okay. We had a leadership that got turned into a passive. Ah. Ah. And then this month... We have a leadership that got turned into a passive. And then we have Atrocitus as a leader. So in the last, you know, several characters, we've only got one leadership among them. So that's... Mm -hmm. And then we had three yeah. if we had kept those two other leaderships. I mean, that's, So I think that's definitely a step in a direction that is very opening yeah. for the meta coming going forward. I mean, I think it's good to have yeah. slightly less leaders than having more leaders because it just opens up more variety. You don't have to have actually, you know, choose. And I've been seeing a lot of teams, you know, with a lot of heavy hitters out there, especially in PvP, that have no leaders. You don't necessarily have to have a leader, and that's what a lot of uh, new players think, that they have to build their team around a leader. That's not necessarily true. So a lot of teams out there can no, absolutely. be fine without it. You just gain more by putting a character that has a leader in the leadership position if you can. That's all. Well, I think something else to point out is that you're taking these subpar leaders, turning them into passives. So it means that the leaderships that are staying are more impactful. All right. I mean, so in terms of Green Lantern, uh, John Stewart, do you have any recommendations for Legendary Order? I uh, was thinking, I want to say it was 42315. Okay. So I want to say I'm not 100% sure. I don't have my notes in front of me. So the passive and then passive. his uh, oh. shield buff. And then four two three one five you said, so then his yeah. AO, so then his AOE after that his basic and his his previous leader ability, 
okay. Yeah, I think I think that's what I had originally thought. Okay. I mean, it's interesting. Why do you? Why would you take the shield buff? Uh, you take the death immunity one before his uh, damage one, his AOE damage. Yes, I would personally. Just it may not seem like a lot with twenty percent chance, but when it does happen, you're going to be so satisfied that you're able to keep somebody alive. Yeah, like yeah. that. So, and you're going to be using that more move more frequently okay. because it is on a lower cooldown as well. Yeah. It's also it's it's also a two turn like his I also, uh, his passive right. I also find three hindering in that he has to be shielded to get the boost. Oh yeah, you have to run like characters like uh, Green Lantern. So you don't want or Atrocitus, Atrocitus or, or Cal Jordan or something else, you know. To start him off so, with big damage. Right. So I I find that you know because you're gonna want to use that shield more often, mm -hmm. I find that upgrade just to be better. All right, then, so I guess we'll uh, leave Jon Stewart there, and then we'll move on to the next section. So, in the arena, we go. So this is uh, a <laughs> where you get to you get to talk about a lot of the uh, the fun things that happened this month. <laughs> so, well, all right, let's talk about the the big thing that's so, on the community's mind. Wonder Girl is on everybody's mind. And she definitely shook up the meta. And she definitely created a new meta around her. Mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting to see what happens here in the near future if that meta continues. So Because people decided that, well, now that the buff-heavy teams with Steppenwolf aren't around, I can run my Batgirl lead with Harley Quinn Mad Jester mm -hmm. with Wonder Girl. So that's kind of where the new meta has kind of gone mm -hmm. because you don't have the same ways to deal with Harley Quinn Batgirl that you did before because those teams are now getting destroyed by Wonder Girl. So it's interesting in that aspect. So people are having to come up with new ways to deal with that. And something else that's emerged because of it is Deadshot Hired Gun Red Robin uh, has kind of popped up, you know, as the counter to that. And then you're starting to see a little bit more use of Supergirl. And I'm pretty sure that both you and I have said Aquaman is going to start coming up a little bit more too. Yep. So I think those are going to be your triangle for a little while. Yeah. It, it kind of harkens it back to the uh, the crit speed meta days where Supergirl and Aquaman sort of wore the counter to that. It's not that uh, speed and crit are super, super important right now. It just happens to be that a lot of the good characters that people are using are very fast and hit very hard. I yeah, that. absolutely. And again, it's it's more a condition of the meta. Mm -hmm. Like I was saying, it's it's because of the Batgirl, Harley mm -hmm. Quinn, Wonder Girl, that mm -hmm. people have started using Red Robin, Hired Gun, Deadshot, because Red Robin hits him with True Sight, Deadshot shoots Wonder Girl, and hopefully takes her down. Yep. So. There you go. Now, part of the, the community drama around Wonder Girl is after her adjustment or her rebalancing, so to speak, uh, a lot of people were sort of like mixed in terms of their opinion. Some people said that was great. It was just she's she's just as good as uh, she was before, but she she seems more fair now. Other people said she said she's too fair, arguably underpowered, and maybe they went too far. And I know Kage is one of those uh, advocates of you know I doesn't like nerfing and doesn't like the idea of um, changing a character from what was advertised or something like that, right? So, I mean, what's your opinions on that issue? I know that you talked about it in the last We Are Legends podcast, but you sort of... I, I got pretty heated in the last We Are Legends podcast, yeah. <laughs> and that, partly my heating up was actually more due to just the way the community is handling it at yeah. large. Mm -hmm. It wasn't even necessarily due to my feelings on the situation. It was just I was kind of fed up with, you know, people screaming for nerfs, then it happens, and then people screaming for, you know refunds and it's like okay this needs to stop we, we, <laughs> we can't be little children you know gimme 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 and then when it happens i don't want it you know it's just like we can't do that as a community we need to we need to be a little bit more adult about it and we need to try to find a way to write our our words out professionally and express ourselves a little bit more like adults i think is part of the issue that i was having fair enough uh, yeah, so I mean, I, I mean, probably got sidetracked there, but no, that's fair. That's fine. But I mean, everyone's you know entitled to their own opinion. So, but on the idea of her rebalancing and on the, the that whole little aspect there, uh, we were talking privately between us and the We Are Legends crew, and you know we were sort of like debating you know why why she should or should not be 
but rebalanced or adjusted at that point or before she did. And I was, I think I hit it on the, on the head with my two points when I said she's either going to have her passive being toned down in terms of damage or her proc rate was going to be not 100% at full max, something like uh, Silver Banshees or um, uh, uh, Terras, for example. Another character that has a, a multi, like multiple AoE procs, but they none of them have it at 100%. And it's exactly what happened. Both of those things happen, actually happened. Would you have? Would you think that if they only did one of those things, that it would have been fair, or did they have to do both of them? Did Did they do a damage change? I I thought it was just yeah, the percentage in the, chance. In the notes, they they wrote that her her damaged was uh was adjusted on her lasso. So that actually wasn't just the passive; it was the actual lasso itself, the third move. So I believe that the base damage was adjusted. It just didn't it didn't say that you know by how much or anything it just i think that they just went in and tweaked the numbers a little bit right because we don't ever get to see those actual numbers so them telling us oh we changed it from 135 to 140 yeah and it's like we don't even know what that means right so i don't i don't blame them for not telling us i mean yeah. uh but as far as it goes i didn't really i haven't really noticed i mean like i said before she wasn't hitting all that hard against my teams so i never really saw that yeah so i can't really i mean i get what people are saying but at the same time I didn't see it, so I don't know for sure. Right. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately. I mean, okay, that's. So, but I think I think it's one of those things that they were probably looking at her as soon as she came out anyway. Yeah. Because it seems like they really, really, really pushed her. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think they kind of knew going in this might be dangerous. that it might cause yeah. a little bit too much of an uproar, and it might be a little bit dangerous. Yeah. That's fair. So. Alrighty then. Well, I guess that's the end of that. In terms of the PvP stuff, we got the Larflees. Uh, what's the what's what's the name of that tournament? Uh, the Avarice, the Avarice Siege, right? Yes. Yeah. So, because he's the Avarice Lantern, the Orange Lantern. Well, it it <laughs> gives the idea that this is going to be an ongoing thing. Yeah, let's hope by so. naming it the Avarice Siege. So well, there's going to be other kinds of siege. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, the fact that it's month long is the first time we're getting this, and this sort of replaces uh, the blitz and the showdowns for this month. So what I could see happening is, for example, this might not be, this could potentially be an every other month type of thing, maybe. So let's say they rotate one month of month long siege, and then the next month they bring back blitzes and showdowns, you know, so on and so forth, right? So that could be something that they're doing, or it could be both. Well, at the here's same a time. here's a counter argument to that, that mm-hmm. something that could happen. And again, I'm speculating. Mm-hmm. What if the blitzes and and, and uh, stuff come back, but they actually just got rid of PvP Wraith Arena? Ooh, yeah, I could see that. But then Wraith Arena is a, a great place to pay out shards, right, for certain characters. So they'd have to they have to adjust that somehow, right? It's something. But else. if you're doing three day uh, three day blitzes mm-hmm. or you know stuff like that, you can pay out those shards a little bit more often, even if they are. Okay. you know plus or minus depending on where you normally would hang out in wraith arena so you're saying so. make the blitzes and showdowns more frequent rather than just being on the weekend yes i would say you know run it for three days run it for three days yeah so you could save off on sunday so you could fit in have everybody doing the avarice all yeah. month or doing the siege all month so you could fit in two every and then week just yeah two every week yeah yeah two every week and you'd have eight eight blitzes and showdowns per week I mean, per month plus the avarice yeah the only thing that i think well you- assume assuming yeah. that it would be four blitz four showdown yeah but i'm not sure they want to do four blitzes it could be you know five and three it could be six I mean, and two could, who knows they, they could just i'm just do, throwing this out there as an idea right like if they do three if they do three day three day segments they could just do 10 of them in total per month and just have them run back to back to back to back yeah and that's another thing is like you know how do you want to split it up yeah you know do you want because I noticed that the Siege is the paywall character mm-hmm. and he doesn't have a regular Wraith Arena PvP. Mm-hmm. Whereas the the Blitz and Showdowns are rarer characters that have been out for a long time now maybe or just you know need more availability and it would definitely give them a little more freedom to, to explore that I think. Okay. And on that note, the fact that he is getting his month long and doesn't have a week, a PvP Wraith Arena week, there was his PvP 
uh, Aretha Rita Week was replaced with Red Robin. So that actually caused a bit of an uproar in the community that yes. noticed that and realized that how are we going to get Lar Fleas for his week? We're not going to be able to get points that week and so on and so forth. But uh, right. just... Well, th- this again, point. this is not the first time this has happened. That's true. But... WB but, made the mistake before and then they realized, oh, I'm sorry, we need to fix that. that. They did the same thing with this one. It's like, oh, we put Larflees in because we were still used to doing what we've been doing. Right. Well, let's fix that real quick. So they, they kind of redacted it and said, okay, this is what we're going to do now. And I think that's more just they kind of forgot. Right. I, I don't want to, you know, think that they did it on purpose. Yeah, that was a sort of like a templating thing, I feel. Like they just sort of copy and pasted what they had in before and replaced it with the new mods characters. But... I would say, uh, but if you if you noticed, I just po- made a post on Reddit just before uh, with the time of us recording this. Um, Kage posted on Discord from the community center that they the that Stanner announced they're replacing Larflees' Alliance Week with Red Robin, which makes a lot more sense. Now that absolutely, now that we now will have more access to Red Robin shards, then you can play with Red Robin during the next week after that. So, and then. And I- I- Kudos to the devs if they were paying attention to the meta that was shaping up around Wonder Girl. Yeah. And if that was the case of them putting the Red Robin here. Yeah. I have to question that. So I'm, I'm kudos to them if that's what they did. If not, then well, you know, who knows? Yeah. Now, the only thing is um, about Lar Fleas, the fact that he's technically losing his Alliance Week now and it's not going to be during his month. Are we going to get a Lar Fleas Alliance Week later down the line? I I hope so, mainly just because it gives people a reason to play with Larfley and to actually test him. Part of the reason I like the Alliance Weeks was sort of it forces me to gear them out, to try them and test them out. And it, and I get to see, you know, I, I even though I would have anyways, it gives me more reason to use them both in PvE and PvP, right? So I'm hoping that he actually gets his Alliance Week, you know, in September. So we'll see. Well, one would hope that he would get it in September yeah. because he's not getting it now. Right. So, and this would be the the second week for Red Robin, right? Right. I would imagine like the week after his siege ends is the week he st- he gets uh, his alliance week. That would make a lot of sense, right? So. It would make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Alrighty. So that was the in the arena. So in terms in terms of the next section, we go to Event Horizon. Let's see. We're talking about the Titans event and the drama surrounding that. So do you want to share your thoughts? Okay. So obviously the event didn't quite live up to what the players kind of expected or anticipated. I'm not even sure expected is the right word. But what we were kind of told was that this was going to be, you know, a challenging event. And it ended up just being, you know, gates on it of requiring certain ranks and legendary ranks. So I think that was a little bit disappointing to the players who do have the high-level rosters. It's like mm-hmm. we're still waiting on content specifically for Gear 11 characters. And that was some feedback that we gave the devs. Is like, if you're going to make the event, don't gate it. Just make it really hard mm-hmm. so that you do have to have those high-powered characters. If you can do it with an L1 character, who cares? You know, I think that was kind of the biggest feedback on that. And then as far as the storyline, the storyline was absolutely amazing and hilarious. I hope you all got to see all of it because it was well worth the the little comic strip that it was. Yeah, I got to see it through uh, the videos of the people who actually played through it all. But yeah, it was it was <laughs> it was the the whole Deadpool reference was actually pretty funny too. <laughs> well, that's something that comes up in the movie too. Yeah. I still haven't got to go see it, but it was in the commercials for the movie, so I'm assuming it's in there. I have to they wait. think Slade is Deadpool, so... I have to wait several months for it to come out in Japan, because it's not popular here. <laughs> Teen Titans is not popular. I'm going to try and go see it tomorrow, actually, so... I'm jealous. I want to watch it. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what happens All if right. I actually get a chance to go see it, so... But uh, as far as the rest of the event, the uh, additional rewards, just they were so low on payout yeah. that you never saw them. Yeah. Or when you did, it just didn't feel like it was enough I actually to really make up for the amount of energy that was expended. For right. players who didn't need the shards. If you needed the shards, you got a ton of shards. Yeah. I have to give kudos on that one. The amount of shards given out was absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, so, just in case for those who actually haven't run it, uh, ran, ran the event, just to give you guys an idea, you get a huge payout of shards the first time you run through it. It's all guaranteed. But uh, I believe that there's no shard payout on reruns. 
So I'm not sure about that because I don't really know anyone who. I actually think I heard it. somebody say that you can earn shards. Yeah, hate, it's just hate as mail rare as everything else. Hate mail said someone else in his community in his uh, alliance. Uh, said that there was a possibility of random drops, but they, he didn't actually confirm it afterwards. But right, it wasn't shown in the uh, event either, so we don't yeah. know. But going into the the event before it actually was opened, uh, I actually had a little bit of a forethought to think about what the um, the potential uh, drops would be for the non shard stuff. So I actually looked into rings because it showed death and life rings. And if you click on your find for death and life rings, I actually saw that it listed the event nodes as rare or low at some points and i had a bad feeling going into that so i knew it was listed as rare for any of those materials actually because i had been doing a lot of gear farming through pve and it was the same thing i mean just to be blunt that's just poop i mean at this point if you're gonna make it that hard if you're gonna put that many gate i mean hard quote unquote with the gates you might as well just make them guaranteed drops. What's the point? Like, make it first time guaranteed and then just bring it down to rare or low drops on the reruns, right? I mean, why Well, not? I mean, you could just give everything a slight boost and just make it, you know, a medium chance. Sure. And not guaranteed. Right. You know, that way at least you feel like you could possibly get stuff and you don't feel so bad when you get nothing. Yeah. Or you I mean, get a bunch of stuff, you know I mean, what I mean? But I mean, I feel like for the amount of energy you're putting in, uh, you, you sh- I know that you're, you're paying out a lot of shards, but still, you know, you should, you should get... S- well, I think, again, the problem was that it was Deathstroke. Yeah. I think, it. you know, when we get to White Lantern Sinestro at the end of this month, if it is the same, people are just not going to care about those extra drops. It was literally because it was Deathstroke, a character who has had so much availability yeah. that nobody needed him. Yeah. Well, I think there's a difference in how much people are going to need White Lantern Sinestro slash want White Lantern Sinestro versus what they wanted for Deathstroke. Well, so. good segue. Good segue for that. So the White Lantern Sinestro is the second six-day challenge this this month. And the first one is Dr. Poison. So you should be happy about that. Woo! <laughs> and obviously the 10-day one is Atrocitus, as we were talking about before. So, I mean, I think Dr. Poison will follow the same formula that they've been doing for the other six-day challenges. As we were speculating on White Lantern Sinestro, uh, as it's called the New Guardians Challenge, I'd imagine it's in the same line as the Titans event. We just hope that maybe they'll learn from some of the uh, the community feedback uh, from the Titans event that maybe they'll adjust things and make it either less gated or more challenging or fix the drops or, or both. The above or some of the above. <laughs> Well, I mean, again, I think with White Lantern Sinestro bringing the fragment reward, yeah. the amount of fragments you got, again, was astounding. Yeah. So that's fine. But again, make it the content being hard that you can't progress, not the gate requirement yeah. of a Legendary 4 or a Legendary 5 character. Mm-hmm. Because not everybody's going to have that, even if they have the shards to do it. Mm-hmm. They're not going to necessarily want to expend the amount of resource necessary to do that. Yeah. So... Yeah. For those of you who are wondering who who uh, didn't actually do the math or didn't run through the Titans event, um, I think it was Duloth and a few other people who did the math on the shard count. It's just over 500 shards if you complete all of it from the Titans event. So if they keep, the I, I want to say it came out to 550. Yeah. So yeah, oh, yeah that's and it's, it. which is exactly all three. Exactly. So it's actually half. Those of you wondering. It's actually half the amount required to get uh, from zero to legendary five. So that makes sense. Yeah. Which is all three. Right. So. In any case, if you think about it that way, um, that's a great. It's a great bonus because if you think about how you were to pay out for the traditional six-day hero challenges, if you get the average of let's say sixty shards per run, and you ran for six days in a row, you'd only get three hundred and sixty shards, right? So this is yeah, absolutely better of a payout, and you only have to do it once. And it was also a regular hero challenge is twenty-four nodes, yeah, versus the ten nodes, right? So you're actually saving energy, yeah, and you're getting it. You only have to do it once to and get all of those shards, and you can. So it's it definitely one of those right. things that you cannot complain about. That right. that's for darn and, sure. And the fact that you only have to do it once, and you have six days to do it, you can spread it out over that six days to to sort of mitigate, manage your energy expenditure to do it on days where you have you know uh, less things to do with that energy. So you can work at it, work at it slowly. Whereas the six day, the regular six day challenges, if you wanted to get as much as you can from it, you'd have to run it every day, full like full energy all the time. Right, exactly. So, There's a big difference in how this new so, challenge is set up. So, and I really like 
I like the concept. I really do. I love the right. concept. I'm really hoping the new Guardian storyline actually is really good too. Yeah. Because that was what drew me into the other one. You know, so I'm really hoping that one continues. I hope so. Too. I'm really hoping they take the good parts and keep them. I'm really hoping they take the bad parts and just make a little bit of adjustment. It doesn't have to be a lot. Yeah, exactly. Just I personally think that if they lower the gates or uh, remove them at certain points, because um, there's not they're not really necessary. But I think L5 is too much of a gate, especially for like newer players, right? So you want even if you got up to like gear 11 already, and you, let's say you're you've been playing for the last six months or something like that, gear 11 is definitely feasible. But L5 is that still pretty much out of reach for a lot of people, right? So that's saying like you know you should be able to play that last node. I feel, it, and it shouldn't be that far out of reach. So uh, that's the one. That's the one thing that I hope that they really fix. Okay, so let's get into shop talk. So first things first with the with the bug with the updates, there were some bug fixes. Cheat death mechanic actually seems fixed now. Um, it seems that. Uh, the clay face buff is gone. <laughs> and uh, there was uh, Dr. Poison's gas grenade was uh, leaving heal immunities on characters before that were being stolen uh, by characters like um, Catwoman, for example. Uh, or but, Penguin or Red Hood. Or, right. So that, Anybody who could steal a buff, right. the heal immunity was being treated as a buff. Yeah. That's been fixed. That's been fixed. And obviously Wonder Girl has been rebalanced and adjusted. And as I mentioned earlier, um, uh, this morning, I guess, well, I mean, this afternoon for you, for most of you guys, at the time of this recording, Larflees' Alliance Week has been changed to Red Robin Week. So other than that, uh, oh, also there was the quality of life changes. They have removed, for the most part, uh, the rounded counters. I believe they still keep it in certain places, but they're not, you know, very important in the places that they show. I think it's just for like prize payouts, like PvP Battle Essence. And let's say prices for certain things to keep it in the uh, K uh, rounding. But uh, other things like the gems, other currencies in the games, they leave it at uh, full count. And the uh, trophies are full count as well. So that's good. I think that they were listening to the community and definitely uh, jumped on that real quick. So I'm happy to see that. So, I mean, in terms of the shop, um, anything you want to say, Ogre? Nothing comes to my mind aside from the Superboy and some of the speculation that was around that. Yeah. I'll just, uh, point, I, I'll just point out, like I did before, there was a trend uh, earlier on with the shop, and they seem to continue it, but it's less consistent. They usually release a character's pack, a variable pack for a character, the day before his Alliance mission, especially if he's a two-point character. So Superboy is today's character, and he was released yesterday. So I know people were saying that he might be getting reworked, or there might be a Superman month. Well, I think it was specifically tied to the fact that he was an 8K 100 shard pack. Ah, yeah. I mean, it is it is a bit odd that it is a full uh, a full count pack or a standard pack. So you don't often see them. You usually see a variable pack. So I definitely see that as a potential. So here here here's my uh, counter argument. I saw somebody else make this observation. Mm -hmm. Dr. Poison and White Lantern Sinestro had similar sales at the beginning of last month. Okay. And they are the hero challenges this month. And they got reworked. I'm, well, not, more not inclined, I'm more inclined to believe that Superboy would be a hero challenge than a rework. Okay, that could be fair. He could also be a rework, though. He could be a rework plus get a hero challenge the month after that. <laughs> right, but if he's a rework for next month, the hero challenge wouldn't be until the following month. Fair enough. Right, like, I mean that's what I'm saying, right? So let's say he is reworked in September, and then he could get a hero challenge in October, which is which is possible too. But I, again, this is this just is all us, speculation. Yeah, this is just all speculating. So, and again, to me personally, I like Superboy. I still think he's actually pretty good. Yeah. I know people complain about his damage, but his utility is through the roof. Oh, so yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah. So, uh, he he's on my to gear list as well. Like, but, and also because, you know, super fam. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let, let's move on to uh, the community watchtower. Wait, you mean we're going to take the watchtower out of orbit and drop it right on top of their little science project? Right now, what we'll do is uh, we'll do a get to know the ogres segment as part of the community watchtower. 
So I guess this section is basically getting to know Mrs. Ogre Barbarian, since we obviously know Ogre very well. <laughs> uh, and uh, if you guys don't already know, uh, we did a, a segment with her. Or, I mean, I guess we are Legends did a segment with her a while back. So uh, we're trying. We're going to try not to cover the same things that they covered in their interview with her. But uh, I guess let's get down to brass tacks. Uh, let's talk about DCL related stuff. So how did you get into DCL, and what do you think of DCL? Well, I started uh, playing DCL probably like a month after I saw Ogre playing it because it sparked my interest. I'm like, you know what? I'll just give it a try. Worst thing I can do is you know dump it, and then I ended up just you know, loving it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had just started playing DCL when I had just missed the Supergirl event. Okay, so, so, you, you, so you actually so, started quite quite early on. Like you, I think you started maybe about a month after I did, more or less. Or maybe, I guess, a month after everyone else did at that time. I want to say it was yeah, like December yeah. for... Yeah, because the release was on, in November, right? So it was Harley Quinn month. And uh, yeah, so Supergirl was, was right after that. Okay, cool. So you, you're. I would guess you would. I put you in the veteran category then. <laughs> so, she is level seventy. There you go. Yeah. Seventy-one. That's impressive. There you go. So, in terms of the game itself, is it, do you have any favorite characters? Do you have any favorite types of characters that you sort of lean towards more than others? Well, right now my uh, main team is kind of like a flip flop. I mostly use like. Zatanna, Etrigan, Enchantress, Hal Jordan, and Bane, oh. and sometimes Harley Quinn, Mad Jester. So it really just depends on what situation, mm -hmm. uh, like depending on like on PvP or whatnot, or like the hero events or whatnot, on what I use. Okay, cool. Do you have like one favorite character or anything like that? <laughs> right now, I I'm using Etrigan a lot, actually. I used to play with Zatanna a lot, but like Zatanna just became a lot better, so I changed my focus. Fair enough. Okay, so uh, let's see here. So in terms of DCL, I mean, I guess we'll, we'll we'll turn it over to Ogre for a little bit. How? Why did you feel like I want you want to get Mrs. Ogre in, in on it as uh, after you started? Well, it's one of those things. We ended up getting a comment at one point asking for an odds woman. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, you know what, fine, let's go ahead and see if she wants to do it. So I asked her, and then uh, she said yeah. So we ended up doing a couple of streams together and some other stuff where she did kind of the lead for it. So yeah, that's think, pretty much where it all kind of originated from. I think I know the person you're talking about. I think uh, it's one of our fans. Her name is D. Uh, and she, yes, that would be. She left a comment on one of the yeah, videos yeah, that she, I had done. Yeah, she comments every now and then too. Uh, I think she's part of the uh, the the new Gotham Sirens, which actually makes a lot of sense if you think about it. <laughs> but uh, she, uh, I mean, I I completely agree with. Her. I definitely love to have more of a female presence in uh, DCL too, because most of these these types of games tend to be very male homogenized and so on and so forth. So I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I hardly ever see any uh, female like counterparts, like especially in like Discord. I'm like, where are all the girls at? Like, is it just me? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'd love to have more of a female presence uh, in the community too. So, if there's any, uh, if there's any other female uh, member of the community that think that they may that might want to be on the show, and give us a shout, and that would be uh, that'd be great. But, uh, back to DCL though. Um, I mean, ogre as yeah. part of the. Uh, as part of the whole getting into DCL at the beginning, I guess in during the during the launch, uh, you know, what crossed your mind says, okay, maybe I'll introduce this to her, and then maybe she'll get uh, she'll be interested, and we can play together. Was that sort of your your mindset? No, it was actually more that she was just kind of watching over my shoulder, and you know, I showed her that, hey, look, there's these characters, and okay. you know, we had just watched uh, Justice League Dark, I think, or something. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. No, not, no, that one hadn't been out yet. We had been watching like the Justice League movies, the cartoons, the animated stuff, and uh, so she was. She kind of knew DC characters, but not like super, you know, heavily. Uh, good. So, yeah. but the more we got into it, and the more she kind of watched over my shoulder, she just kind of wanted to get into it. So that's a good segue because I was. Just it was ask. when he showed me Harley Quinn is when I went it all all over it. <laughs> cool, cool. So, so that, that was going to be my next question for you. So, I mean, in terms of like comics and other guest general nerdy stuff, um, do you have much of a background in that? 
Like, did you, did, you, did you know DC or Marvel more before getting into this game? She likes to blame me uh, for that. I actually knew a bit about it. Um, a couple of my friends, like, were all in it at, like, throughout my childhood. And I'm like, oh, let's start reading a comic here and there. And I bypassed all, like, the Superman and stuff like that. And I <laughs> went straight to Harley Quinn and Joker stuff. I'm always into like the villains <laughs> okay awesome so i guess you're sort of like um the one of our members on the, uh, the community center uh joker cpc or cpoc he he likes villains a lot too it seems so that makes a lot of sense you don't always have to be like uh mainstream the people who always like the heroes like me <laughs> that's good those, uh, those blasted goody goodies. Yeah. <laughs> I guess Oprah sort of falls into that camp too, since his favorite character is Deathstroke. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, right. for sure. The villains are just more interesting, man. I hate to tell you. Fair enough. I mean, there's a lot more of them too in the universe because there's only a fixed number of heroes, and oh, yeah. uh, you have to have more villains or else yes. the stories get boring. So. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Alrighty. Uh, the next thing I want to ask is about, uh, I guess, your first impressions to, of uh, WB San Francisco when you went down there. Since uh, this is Ogre's second time, uh, what was your impressions of the first time? <laughs> I totally nerded out. Yeah. <laughs> what, was, yeah. what, was, what was the whole experience I felt, like? Uh, I felt like I was a kid in a candy store. Oh, awesome. <laughs> I mean, I know there's certain things that you can't tell us because of your NBA and so forth, so on and so forth, but what can you tell us? And, you know, that, I guess, anything that's harmless, so like decorations, things that, that caught your eye, things like that. A lot of the artwork was actually pretty cool. Um, I like the aspect of, you know, seeing it on the wall instead of, you know, just on screen kind of thing. And then, like, when it came to the time to like do testing and stuff mm -hmm. they they gave us a choice between android and apple i'm like yeah forget android i'm going with an ipad <laughs> <laughs> do you normally use so, iPad or do you use an android it, we usually have, have android phones ah. yeah uh, i'm more of an apple person myself over android but apple's kind of expensive so i gotta kind of go with the android no i, I get you completely <laughs> Uh, I kind of, and, uh, I kind of feel like I, I had the, op I kind of feel like I wish I could go to app, uh, to Android instead of Apple because I started with an iPhone. I had Android before, but Android's a lot more flexible in a lot of different, uh, areas. But, well, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's unfortunate that this game is not cross platform yet. I mean, not cross platform in the sense that you can swap your account to another app, a platform, but. You know, like, yeah. Yeah, because basically... Yeah, I can hear you on that. Yeah, we're, we're locked into um, our accounts, so we can never really switch down to another machine afterwards. <laughs> unless they make that happen. Yeah. Well, yeah, so when you... I'm playing, sure eventually they'll do it. Yeah. But when you were playing on the iPad, I mean, was it any different for you? Um, the, um, I guess the resolution was a lot, like, a lot clearer and cleaner for me. We were testing out the characters, like all the colors look more vibrant and like crisp mm -hmm. to me. And I, I like that when it comes to my games. I like everything to, you know, be on point and clear because I have bad eyesight as it is. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and like when we were testing, when I found out who the characters were, I'm like, oh, okay. And then when we started to play, I'm like, Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess now that everyone knows that the, the, the new month, the new month characters are atrocious and Larfries. So what are your opinions on these characters? So when I was doing testing, I first did Larfries, and I was like, oh, okay, uh, I could see how like what they went with it, you know, since he's greed and all that. But you know, they're gonna go with you know stealing and stuff, which personally is not my cup of tea, but. I'm like, I can see how other people would enjoy it. And then I saw Atrocitus, and I'm like, oh my god, must have. You better be the free character, <laughs> or I will be sad. And he was. <laughs> <laughs> I was so excited to find that out. Okay. I'm like, yay! <laughs> so what, what really drew you to Atrocitus, I guess, which got you sort of to that Irma Gerd feeling? 
Well, like, when I saw him, I'm like, okay, this is epic, you know, just his appearance. And then when I started actually play with him, I'm like, holy moly, you are hitting for a lot. You're, like, with what I was testing, uh, with the characters that I was using, like, I didn't even get a turn before the game was over because <laughs> all my characters had propped off of each other like four times. <laughs> I'm like, holy moly, I must have you. <laughs> I guess, I mean, I guess we'll just to clarify something here real mm -hmm. quick. She doesn't have any gear 11 characters or anything. And when we were testing, they're maxed out characters. They're gear 11, level 80, L5. So to her, what? it's a really big difference to see that kind of stuff. Oh, obviously, yeah. So that is part of it. Yeah. But Just yeah, that, that is. But I can still imagine <laughs> the, the reaction of, like, all these characters, like, basically getting a bunch of call assists and then just obliterating the other team. I can imagine that, whoa, what's going on here? Type of reaction, right? It was insane. Like... <laughs> she has an affinity for the enraged mechanic, apparently. Oh, there you go. <laughs> hey, you know I'm a hothead. <laughs> <laughs> right. I and love there's the, the short answer. Aspect. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, you wouldn't be ogres otherwise, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Fair enough. Like the thing is, is when it came to me to actually trans transition from, uh, you know, just being plain all me to an ogre, I'm like, okay, I I can do this. And, like, throughout my childhood, I was called Two-Face. So I'm like, I'm going to take that as a compliment. Yeah, that, that actually brings up... you got to explain why you have the nickname. <laughs> my birthmark um, looks like I have two different faces, basically, because one side looks like how Two-Face did back in the day with, you know, the Riddler and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to expand movie. on this a little bit. Um... So she has a port wine stain on her face that covers about 40% of it. So it actually does look like, and it goes split down right the middle of her nose, you know, covers most, pretty much all of her cheek and stops at her mouth. So it's literally uh, like But she does look like, she does actually look like Two-Face. That's it. Exactly. That's actually. But female. That's actually something that, that'd be interesting and think about it in terms of the game, because we're probably going to. Like, I think someone brought it up. I think it was on the We Are Our Legends podcast saying that, you know, November 2nd being the second anniversary of D DC Legends would be a great time to release Two Face. So maybe yeah. someone that. Yeah, Joker that. pointed that out. Yeah. So maybe, uh, so maybe this, that would be someone for you to pick up so that someone you could sort of, uh, I guess, uh, relate to or sort of like get, I sort of, uh, steer towards. I sort of uh, make, oh, yeah. make make that you, right? So. Oh yeah, for yeah. sure. Like. <laughs> uh, do Do you know much I, about Two Face from the comics, though? Do you know uh, as a character? I know he used to be like Harvey Dent. You know, he used to be like with the police force, and then like I can't remember if it was a car accident, but he got injured somehow to where he had the deformity, and that's when he like went off and seeked revenge and stuff like that and became a villain. I mean, that's that's how I remember it, so. Yeah. In terms of uh, a character, I think, like, his main gimmick is that he he decides everything with a coin. So he's always, like, flipping a coin. Yeah. And it's always 50 50. Heads you live, tails you die kind he, of thing. Basically, well, it's, yeah. He always has two minds about everything, as whether he still wants to be the good guy or whether he's <laughs> going to be the bad guy. Yeah, he's, he's always torn between that dynamic. He's either Harvey Dent or yeah. Two-Face, basically, all the time, right? So, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and Joker was saying this before, that Joker-damaged goods could basically just be repackaged as Two-Face. But uh, the ima I would imagine a character like Two-Face in the game, basically, he would be either a god or do nothing. He would... <laughs> he, he would well, I, th I think... I think because the devs and I actually talked about this on my first visit, because they really want to put Two-Face in, but they want to do it right. So it's something that I brought up was you want to look at characters that do rely on RNG, and when does it feel good and when does it not? The move has to be powerful enough on base, but when it does proc, it has to do something extra really cool. I could imagine it. Basically, yeah. what if they gave him like a passive, a passive attack that would basically either do nothing or do a lot? Base. That would make sense to me because it wouldn't. Pro well, that's wouldn't... why Joker pointed out that Joker damaged goods. Uh, his third move, 
the has a boost. really high variance on how much damage it does. Yeah. That was part of it. Yeah. The other part of his kit that stood out to him that was, yeah. you know, one that could be really good was that uh, the basic attack, it is going to hit the main target, but then if it procs, it hits everybody. I see. That makes sense. I mean, uh, another thing to think about, though, for me, if, if they ever release a two-faced character, the only thing, the only thing that I wish that they would do is that the animation for when the character's idle, like he's not doing anything, it's on his active turn, he's waiting, is I want two fish to be there flipping a coin. That's it. <laughs> that would that be pretty, would awesome. be pretty cool. Yeah, he's always that would be pretty turn, cool. Right? He's, he, whether he's walking around, he's holding a gun, he's not holding a gun, he's holding someone by the scuff of their neck. He's always flipping a coin. Always. So mm-hmm. He's not yeah. necessarily flipping the coin. He's right. usually just playing with it in some Basically, way. Yeah. So it doesn't even necessarily have to be flipping it. Yeah. He could just be rolling it over his fingers and I would be happy. Yeah, I mean, he could, yeah that would he, be pretty he cool. He could be twiddling it around on his, on his fingers. But the only problem is that the character would be really small and the animation would be hard to pick up. But if you could... Because I, I, I was thinking the only thing that would be really visually, uh, I guess, easy to pick up would be him actually flipping the coin. right? But uh, yeah, either yeah. way. Anything with the coin, anything with the coin, that would make me happy if they, when they release that. Coin. Alrighty. Well, it would be really cool if his attack animations would actually have that too, yeah. where he goes into attack, flips the coin, and then does whatever he's going to do. Yeah. That would be cool. That would be really cool. Cool. So, I mean, aside from Two Face, I mean, uh, other than villains, are there any heroes that you like in uh, in DCL right now, or I mean, for in DC that you might want in DCL in the future? The hero, like one of the heroes that I like the most, is already in the game, and he was in there early, which would be the Flash. Oh, but cool. if I were to pick one that were to, you know, not be yet in the game, I would probably do. Uh, let's see. You're always there, there's a bit of a list. Uh, speedy. Yeah, Speedy would be a good one. Uh, so would you want now here's the interesting thing about Speedy would you want a Speedy character like a Titans type of character or would you want a Red uh, Arrow type of character who's a bit older like Red Arrow the Arrow like, like, verse female version uh, not yeah the uh, uh, comic version Oliver's sister yeah 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 like Thea Queen's version yeah which I thought would be really cool you know the one I think, correct me if I'm wrong, because uh, I remember from the show, and I'm not sure if DC in the comics, it's the same. She picks up after Roy Harper, right? Yeah, she did. She yes, picked up yes. the, the hood after Roy Harper. That- I think he got like injured or something and then had to go into a witness protection program. Right. Well, he. So she took over. Well, he got blamed as the arrow. Yeah, he had to spoilers, yeah. by the way. He had to cover for Oliver <laughs> and uh, and then basically just, you know, uh, went AWOL because he needed to get out of Dodge, right? So, yeah. Okay. Uh, and is that consistent with the comics, though? Uh, I, I'd imagine so, right? Yeah, I, I think so. That actually, because of the success of the TV show, the character Thea Queen was actually added to the comics. Oh, I'm not 100% sure on that. I'm not 100% sure. I believe her and Diggle both got added to the comics. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. So basically, if that's actually true, that'd be a... I could be misremembering. I could be wrong. Yeah. I mean, the, that'd be really cool if they actually introduced the Queen as a, as a Red Arrow, um, given that, right? Yeah. Actually, and it adds more female characters to the game. But then, I was going to say, mm-hmm. normally, you know, uh, these type of games, you want more female characters. But that's not actually true. I just realized the majority of all, a lot of the good characters these days are all female. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> but well, that's, that's like just because we've had a lot of good females come out recently. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All righty. Cool then. So, I mean, I guess aside from DC and DCL related stuff, are there, are there any, any nerdy things that you're generally into uh, or that maybe Ogre got you into? <laughs> well, uh, I'm, I'm a bit of a Disney nerd myself. Oh yeah, me too. So, <laughs> so like, I nerd out over stuff like Alice in Wonderland, Nightmare Before Christmas, kind of like the dark and twisted stuff. <laughs> oh, okay, you play magic? Yeah, I do. So, are you a so you're a black mage? <laughs> She's not. She's not. A black yeah, mage. no, I'm not. <laughs> nope, <laughs> I'm not. She um, tendencies to prefer blue green. Oh, okay. yeah. All right, the Simic Guild. Okay, that makes sense. It's a more of a controlling yeah. sort of slow grind type of uh, type of uh, player. All right, all right. Well, yeah, if you look at the, the, the guild game. itself, she has the 
she kind of has the mentality of the simic where you know things will get better over time we just have to figure out what it is we have to do to it first and it's got to be wild and exactly <laughs> yeah <laughs> like right now i'm running tatiova with just like land dot deck and it's hilarious that's cool i mean <laughs> i just ran because you know what they say especially with commander players the your commander sort of kind of defines who you are in that sense if you if you sort of have an affinity towards simic that says a lot about you and then i guess ogre if i were to put put him on something i'd put him in rakdos <laughs> <laughs> Am I right? I do like Rakdos. Uh, right now, the deck that I have... He's more like uh, Jund. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm more Jundy, but right now, I'm just running Mono Black. But it's always a graveyard strategy, so... But, I mean, if you think about it this way, yeah. my Rakdos wasn't far off from Jund. <laughs> All you have to do is add the big green things, and you have Ogre. <laughs> yeah. yep, See, like, I, I want there to be a... Uh, creature that's legendary at some point that is red blue and green because i also have the anger aspect so i like like to burn people right. with fire well, what's there's the- plenty of those out there it's just she doesn't found one that she actually likes uh, yeah what's the name of the red blue and green wedge again i forget temer uh, yeah the team. temer yeah, yeah. Oh wait, there's there's a couple of Teamer legends, but they're not any good. That's that's basically I remember that. But well, it depends on how you play. She doesn't like how they play oh, okay. because there's the yeah. Maelstrom Wanderer. There's Animar. Animar. Oh, there's yeah. uh, Riku of Two Reflections. There's there's several of them. It's just she doesn't like the way any of those play. Cool. Yeah. Right. I mean, I guess uh, so. you know there's a lot of design space, especially with more commander stuff coming down the pipeline. So you know they'll probably uh, make something catered for you in the near future. Yeah, I'm I'm sure they will. I mean, like the meta for magic is always changing, so you never know. Yeah, that's cool. So I, I'm I'm pretty jealous of you guys. The fact that you guys share some of, of these hobbies together. Uh, my wife has uh, pretty much nothing in common with me in, the, in that aspect. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think the only thing that we have a difference on is uh, between DC and Marvel. Yeah. Brett likes Deathstroke. I like Deadpool. Fair enough. I, mean, I don't blame you. I personally like I like Deadpool, but mainly because of Ryan Reynolds. But <laughs> I like, I like, I like, Ryan Reynolds is Deadpool. Well, yeah, he was he was born to be Deadpool. But I mean, I read. Yeah, uh, for sure. I read Deadpool growing up a little bit, but I wasn't uh, a big fan of him because I didn't understand the whole. I it was so so funny about fourth wall breaking back then. I didn't even know what fourth wall breaking was until I realized it, like watching the first Deadpool movie when I got when I was older. So yeah, yeah. Did you Deadpool's know definitely not comics? really for children. Yeah, <laughs> crazy. Like it's crazy, crazy bad for kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So. Did you know that in one of the comics uh, issues of Deadpool, he actually said that Ryan Reynolds would play him when they make a movie? Really? I didn't know that. So yeah, was this like, <laughs> was this like before the before the first Deadpool movie? Yeah, this was like two years before the movie was wow. even announced. Wait, wait but was yeah. it before or after the Wolverine uh, origin movie? Or was it? Uh, no, 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 before the movie was even announced. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. So that was uh, a lot of uh, forward thinking. I wonder if they were in talks with well, it, would have, it would have been right around the time frame where X-Men and stuff were coming out, yeah. but it wasn't quite to the point where Wolverine Origins had come out yet. They, they might have, I yeah. don't even think that he had played Green Lantern yet. They might have had some insider info where, let's say, you know, Ryan Reynolds was in talks with the studio or maybe he was auditioning or something. So then, uh, like, hey, Ryan Males would make a great Deadpool. And then they just sort of, like, fed that down. You know, a little bird told another, another yeah. little bird, and there you go. <laughs> well, that kind of, you know, that's the point of Deadpool, right? So, yeah. yeah. Right. My favorite line in that movie is, um, don't make the suit green or animated. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, uh, that was Deadpool 1, right? Yeah. It's yeah. Yeah. It was the original Deadpool when he goes to the uh, think tank area where they're going to make him a mutate. Yeah. Uh, he says that it references the, the Green Lantern suit. That's so funny. Fair enough. <laughs> I'm guessing you've watched the second one too, or or not? Oh yeah, oh, yes. like yeah. like the week it came out, we went. I'm like, I have to see it. <laughs> yeah. The I guess we talked about this in the uh, one of the other podcasts too. But I mean, um, any favorite parts from the Deadpool two movie? 
there there's actually quite a few um like i think one of the parts that i found kind of adorable would be uh when i can't remember the kid's name but he's talking to i think juggernaut is it fire fist fire fist uh, juggernaut yeah, and he like slides a tray under the door and starts talking to each other like they're bonding through a door. I thought that was super adorable. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, it, and here it, I loved it because Juggernaut. Everybody loves Juggernaut, but yeah, no, that's interesting. That that the whole sort of friendship dynamic. It was sort of Deadpool is doing too. He says like either you're gonna you're gonna try because the the little kid's idea was uh you know find the biggest guy and punch him and become the you know the big guy in the in the jail. But instead, he yeah. Deadpool's like find the biggest guy and become his best friend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and another thing that threw me through a loop was um, the guy who ended up playing Cable is also Thanos. So yeah. that was like, Josh oh my gosh, Josh what the heck? <laughs> which, <laughs> threw me through a loop. Which sort of begs the question: What happens if there's a a Deadpool Avengers crossover? But then again, at the same time, Deadpool. <laughs> The Brolin getting paid. Yeah, but I mean, at, this, at the same time, you know, Deadpool was making references to the fact that Brolin was playing Thanos in the Deadpool movie. <laughs> yeah, so. it's 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 hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. That Good and stuff. the fact that uh, uh, what's her name? Um, Negasonic Teenage Warhead. Yep. Uh, she ends up having a girlfriend, which I'm like, it's about time that they make a little bit of a change for that. I think that uh, a lot of the, especially with the with the TV shows, the the direction that a lot of these comic comic uh, franchises are do are going is they're getting more politically correct. They're trying to put more diversity in their characters, so LGBT characters, uh, characters of color, things like that. So you know, good on them, I say. Yeah, I I, I agree. Um, they're more diverse now. Definitely. All right. All right, cool. So that was a that was a great interview. I guess we'll we'll, we'll cover the rest of the stuff. I guess you, you might be a little bit busy with the with the kids over there, so I'll let you get to that then. <laughs> All right, thanks for being here. All, right. All right, bye. So that was that was a great segment with Mrs. Ogre, uh, and then we'll do let's see, shout outs to our new patrons. Well, I guess there's patrons from uh, from last month as well. Uh, at our do gooder tier, we have Parsnips Paradigm hanging out and James B. And then we have at the hero tier, hate mail, being cool at $10. And our patrons from last month, uh, again, William I, Backfire COH, and uh, Ventus One hanging out at the civilian tier. Just a reminder again for you guys who haven't all had a chance already, you can become a patron on our Patreon page at patreon.com slash the oddsman, which will get you entry into our monthly giveaway of... Uh, $10 gift cards or more of as soon as we hit the uh, $30 goal. And uh, you can do that by just becoming uh, at least a patron at the civilian tier of $1 or more. That will also give you access to our unedited, uncut versions of the podcast, which I usually upload a day or two after it before I go and edit it uh, for the official release. Of course, uh, you also get an additional entry into the draw at the end of the month by submitting a question on our Patreon page. So that means you get two entries in total for the draw at the end of the month. And the questions at the end of the month will be answered in priority sequence. So the Patreon questions will be answered first, and then the rest will be through Reddit and Discord. So I guess that wraps up uh, the Community Watchtower. So uh, any last words, Ogre? Uh, once again, congratulations to Backfire COH and Parsnip Paradigm. Yep. Right. For our uh, first yep. giveaways. So also, uh, thanks you, again for listening, guys. Yep. For Backfire Coh and Parsnip Paradigms, I already emailed you guys about that. So Parsnip Paradigms, we were in touch already. Backfire, I haven't uh, received a reply from you yet, but uh, get back to me. Uh, I think that your gift card is already sitting in your inbox. So go check that. And that's about it. So again, yeah, thanks, you, thanks, guys, and that's all. Bye, guys. <laughs>
top 10 cutoff at 49,462 points. The number one alliance was UJLA slash COA, which was at 91,662 points. Congratulations to all of our winners. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Oddsman Broadcast. Be sure to check out the next episode of We Are Legends coming up next week.